Hey guys, Avi here, and welcome to this brand new series on Python and MySQL. MySQL is an amazing database, and I'm gonna be showing you how you can manipulate your very own database using Python. Now, before I get started, guys, definitely check out the Codex. The Codex.me is your number one stop for everything Python related. We just launched a brand new course, the Complete Python Bootcamp. This course has everything you need to know about Python programming in order to get you started. If you want to jumpstart your career with Python programming, definitely check this course out, guys. It's only $10. Now, back to MySQL, guys. So first thing first, go ahead and search MySQL on any browser. There are a couple of things in your download. First thing is going to be your MySQL database. So go to mysql.com downloads. And then if you scroll all the way down, you're going to see community downloads. Now, you probably are going to run into my, some MySQL issues. Maybe, maybe not. But for now, install MySQL Community Server, scroll down over here and choose your operating system and click on the first one, download your very own MySQL server. Once that's installed, guys, uh, pause this video for now. It's gonna take a couple of minutes. I already have it installed. The second thing that you're gonna need, guys, is a MySQL Workbench. So search MySQL Workbench. And this is basically a UI for us to view our databases, to manipulate them, etc. It's much better than just working with code. Go ahead and click on MySQL Workbench and install this. So download now. And then over here, if you scroll down, you can choose your operating system and hit download. Okay. So doing that, guys, you will have two things downloaded. Scroll down. No thanks. Just start my download. You'll have two things downloaded, guys. One is your MySQL server. The second is your MySQL Workbench. All right, now that MySQL and your MySQL Workbench has been installed, guys, the next step is to initialize our database. The way we can do this is by opening up MySQL. Again, it's in System Preferences on a Mac and on Windows. If you do a quick Google search, or I'm sure it's in your download or somewhere, just figure it out. Once you open up MySQL, guys, the next step is to initialize your database. So to initialize your database, pass in a password that you're going to remember. Again, make sure this password is something that you commonly know because you'll be needing it in just a second. And instead of saying use strong password encryption, for now, just say legacy password encryption. That way our workbench will be easily, will, will be able to connect with our MySQL database. So go ahead and hit OK, enter in your password, and now you've successfully initialized your very own MySQL server. The next step is to go ahead and actually start our server. So once our database is initialized, the option to start our server will be shown over here. Go ahead and click on it, initialize, and now start your server. Your MySQL server is now running. Head over to your MySQL workbench and open it up. So here it is currently not opening. So I'll go ahead and restart it. MySQL Workbench. And let's take a look. What we're going to do, guys, is we're going to create a MySQL connection. I'm going to say test connection. And we're going to pass in the password that we were using. All right. And then we're going to say test connection. And then we say successfully made the MySQL connection. Awesome. So now we have our MySQL database and server set up. It seems to be working. We were able to connect. Now our goal is to connect with Python. So let's head over to PyCharm. PyCharm is the interpreter that I'm using. I'm going to go ahead and install MySQL connector. So go to PyCharm preferences and then project interpreter. And you're going to install one of basically three connectors you can possibly use. If you search for MySQL and then connector, there are three connectors I have installed one, two, and three. Sometimes you have errors. Sometimes it doesn't work. For now, just try installing MySQL dash connector. Again, if you're not using PyCharm, guys, you're going to run pip3 install MySQL dash connector. Okay. And then if that doesn't work, try using Python. If that doesn't work, try using Python dash RF. They're all different versions. They're all suited for different environments, but hopefully one of these three modules will work. Again, if you do have any issues later on, definitely check out Stack Overflow for help, but hopefully their MySQL connector will work. Once you've installed MySQL connector, guys, after that, the road is very easy. We're going to go ahead and import MySQL.connector. I'm actually going to make my window a little bit bigger for you to see. So view, enter presentation mode. There we go. So over here, I'm importing MySQL.connector. After that, guys, I'm going to create my DB instance and set this equal to MySQL.connector.connect. And then after that, I'm going to pass in inside of this three variables, my host, my username and my password. So my host can just be localhost, either 127.0.0.1 or localhost, comma, my username. Again, for initializing all databases, the username is root. You can obviously change that later. 
And then you have your password. Password is going to be equal to whatever you set. I made mine super simple, one, two, three, password. After that guys, just print out my DB to see if the connection worked, my DB. Go ahead and save this, control shift R on PyCharm, and there we go. MySQL.connector.connection object, fantastic. We were successfully able to connect to our MySQL database with Python. That was it for this video, guys. We're just getting started with Python and MySQL. I hope you're as excited as I am. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.